Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of No More Kids in Scientology. And in this episode, we are going to continue reacting to none other than Mike Rinder and John Atak's video, Mike Rinder Answers Miriam's Francis Allegations. So let's see what allegations are really being answered. And let's also dig below the surface, you guys, and really understand what in the literal hell is going on with this interview and all these points that Mike Rinder keeps wanting to make. The way the, the dioceses are all registered yes. separately. Many of them have gone bankrupt because of having to pay compensation for child abuse, um, quite rightly, as they should. So you've got this this thing of, of this incredible complexity with hundreds, I, I mean, back in the 90s, I, I think I counted 400 distinct corporations. Then you have the idea that, that, that this stupid Hubbard mistake of telling the world that there was a covert data collection agency. From then on, Harassment was outsourced to private detectives, people like Eugene Ingram, uh, disgraced LA. So let's just really react right now to Mike Rinder's literal body language so everyone can see how is he really responding here? How is he really looking while all of these points are being brought up by John Atac, including the fact that there is a data collection agency embedded into the framework of Scientology. And said data collection agency is none other than the Office of Special Illegal, Highly Illegal Affairs, which Mike Rinder volunteered pro bono to work in so it's very very interesting that your body language shows how uncomfortable you are as all of this is being brought up mike rinder you should look at yourself and see if you don't spot your own uncomfortable AF body language that you have on full display right here. A PD officer uh, who went around the world harassing people. And you, so you get a lawyer to hire a PI who might hire another PI form firm. So that if you get caught, like the guy who hacked um, Tony Ortega's emails, who was convicted and, in, and yours, it convicted in June, 2015, I think. Yeah. Um, so this is there is an active organization there but there is also things you know you don't the, the terrible mistake when the fbi came in in july 77 the biggest raid in their history they found red box documents they found documents that implicated you know material i have on charles manson comes out of one of those boxes um showing all right so material that John Atak has on Charles Manson. So for those thinking that L. Ron Hubbard is such a superior choice from his disgusting protege Charles Manson, think about that again. What did Charles Manson do? blab a bunch of pathetic delusions and what did his sycophants go and do at his behest go and commit unthinkable criminal activity which everyone knows exactly what happened so imagine that charles manson didn't order child aggravated abuse to take place at an industrial size scale at an unthinkable rate 
What makes you, Mike Rinder? What makes you, John Atak? What makes every last other shred of L1 Hubbard protege better than a Charles Manson protege? Because if y'all landed in jail, convicted of the crimes y'all have committed, which in this case have much to do have everything to do with what y'all normalize at an industrial size scale be done to underage kids who could not consent. Well, you go and do the literal research and see who's even lower than a murderer in jail, who's at most risk Who's the bottom of the bottom of the barrel criminal? Since y'all did commit crimes on underage kids, we're talking babies, we're talking five-year-olds, we're talking eight-year-olds, we're talking nine-year-olds, we're talking 11-year-olds, we're talking 12-year-olds, we're talking 15-year-olds, we're talking 18-year-olds. Industrial size scale is the magnitude of the criminal acts that were perpetrated on all kids that were acquired in a conspiracy of child traffickers racketeering their way to commoditizing and making pawns out of kids that have no shred of a literal clue what in the literal hell these protégés of L1 Hubbard of a convicted felon, the literal opinion leader of Charles Manson. So let it really sink in for all of you who really want to come and say, oh, but the Scientologists are so much better than Charles Manson. So compare the crimes that Charles Manson's protégés got away with committing on underage kids and then compare the crimes to why Mike Rinder, Debbie Cook, Angie Blankenship, Supiche Gentry, Angie Trent, all of these grown ass adults that were recruiting children to be ensnared in a scheme that was very helter skelter of them to be involved in. Because what L. Ron Hubbard said, helter skelter, L. Ron Hubbard said, we really need to save a world, go and enslave a bunch of kids, and let's all really save a world. So it really is time to come down from the delusion of grandeur that these people were, of all things, saving a world by following the rhetoric of a convicted, indicted felon that is pitching in his literal rhetoric that children can be and should be abused and turned into fair game for all adults to have their way with full unfeathered access, with parents that are fully kneecapped and have, for all intents and purposes, sacrificed their own kids in an attempt to curry favors inside of the disgusting hotels where, yes, you guessed it, Mike Rinder, Marty Rathbun, and David Miscavige went begging the IRS to give them a 501c3 status because they calculated if we get a 501c3 status, then the police departments will never come around and check what in the literal hell we are doing with underage children inside of the disgusting hotels. His deep involvement with Scientology, which they really didn't want people to know. And there's also the operation where they sought to persuade the world that he'd been involved in the process Church of the Final Judgment under the de Grimstons, a, a splinter group from Scientology. He may well have had contact with that group. Nobody that, you know, I've spent a year researching this, 
I've not seen any direct statement that he did. But so imagine you, John Atak, big researcher that you are, big Scientologist that you were. Imagine you didn't research a shred of thing involving the systemic institutionalized abuse of minors at an industrial size scale. Imagine when you and I did have the one phone call we ever did have ever. You were shocked when I was bringing up the points that I've been bringing up for a very, very long time. Imagine you were shocked and told me, oh, I never thought about it like that. Well, imagine that you were then given the opportunity to think about it like that. Imagine that the facts were literally rubbed in your face and you sit next to the facilitator, the one that was working with all the attorneys to pitch the IRS, to beg the IRS to erase a $1 billion tax bill, to literally figure out a way to incentivize their so-called donors of the 501c with tax write-offs as they admit to full-blown felonies, which this MFers were using as blackmail Data mined and sent all to OSA, the data mining collection agency that the FBI knows everything about existing. That I guess the FBI is so stupid, so gullible, so naive, so, oh, well, we, told, we were told by Mike Rinder that everything changed after Mary Sue Hubbard got indicted and he took over the Office of Illegal as Fuck Affairs. So it doesn't make a shred of sense because it's all built on lies. All these theories, all these researching involves literally glamorizing, literally objectifying and whitewashing how Oh, yes, you guys, people get involved in cults. Let's really talk about cults. Let's talk about... It's called racketeering. It's called racketeering. It's not called a cult. If you're in a conspiracy filled with adults conspiring to commit criminal activity, including but not limited to money laundering, including but not limited to child trafficking, including but not limited to whatsoever, too, Felonies getting laundered through so-called audits, full self-admitted crimes. Then that is called racketeering. And it's not called, oh, it's part of a cult, you guys. I didn't know what in the hell I was doing. And then I figured it out when they abused me because David Miscavige really beat me. Getting beat up by David Miscavige is absolutely irrelevant irrelevant af an altered importance af because while all of these grown adults have made a whole song and dance about how they were the victim they were the abused ones it really sucks to be me imagine what they we're doing to kids. Imagine none of them are on any public record repudiating what in the hell they did. Imagine all they're good for is to be proud members of the nothing to do with me club. Oh, no, that had nothing to do with me. Oh, I wasn't there. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, nobody CC'd me. Oh, I had no KRs on that. Oh, I didn't have an ethics file. Oh, I didn't have a video recording. Oh, I didn't see the transcribed worksheets of the admission of a felony. So by all means, John Atak, researcher of the century, where in the hell is your literal research? 
but I have got the Operation Scientology put out to say, let's blame it on them so that we right. don't get blamed. <laughs> you also have this, the Simon Bolivar policy. What is so funny, Mike Rinder? I mean, again, what is so literally funny to you? Why do you always laugh at the most inappropriate, disgusting things? Is it really funny that um, every time these MFers get caught committing a criminal act, they blame it on someone else? Do you think that's a laughing matter? Do you think that's really funny? Because so I will be very great for you to type on your little blog why I think it's a laughing matter that crimes were systemically laundered by the office that I ran for decades. That should be your next literal blog post. Why you find everything so funny and everything is ha ha ha, he he he, everything is so funny and la la la. But you know what? It is not that funny given the context that crimes against children are what is being exposed and questioned given the fact that you literally went on this interview. Mike Rinder answers Miriam Francis's allegations, and you laugh at the prospect of how all allegations were blamed back on the victim, as if that's not been Scientology's only MO since time immemorial. Well, see, the responsibilities of leaders, where Hubbard says, you know, you don't have to tell people what you're doing. You know, you can protect me by going and doing horrible crimes without me ever being blamed because I didn't whisper in your ear and tell you to do this. So, you I mean, again, you, John Atak, also all smiles as you are regurgitating the literal policies of a convicted felon, where, yes, breaking news to you. The convicted felon told all his co-conspirators, pro bono co-conspirators, to not say anything about heinous criminal activity going on, to cover it up, to pretend it doesn't exist. So what is so funny about that? What is so religious about that, John Atak? You've got what is virtually a mafia culture where people are not any longer reporting these things. Be you got what is virtually a mafia culture. Bingo. Now you're getting closer. Now you're getting closer. See, you could call it a mafia culture, but you could also just call it what it's literally called racketeering racketeering influence corruption so yes these people were influenced to what to racketeer to act in a mafia style way to child traffic children at an industrial size scale and calling it saving a world so by all means Figure out your pitch and figure out where in the hell you stand because you're talking out of your neck and you're capping AF. Because those reports may be discovered. So, as you say, and your situation would be that you might have several post titles at the same time and be dealing with thousands of, of in instances. Now, when it comes to Miriam Francis, the, I think the the significant events were in the late 1990s at a time when you said that that the only thing you were working on was Lisa McPherson, because the Lisa McPherson case could have brought Scientology down and should have brought it down. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Uh, Again, you laugh at all the wrong things, my grinder. Absolutely correct. Lisa McPherson's case should have really shut down the hotel operation that you, Marty Rathbun, 
and David Miscavige wanted to save a world. But guess what? Who stood in the way of derailing that investigation? Oh, turns out it was you, your little buddy, Marty Rathbun, and David. So if there's anything that's on the literal record as your production record is your ability to derail criminal investigations, your ability to obstruct justice like you're eating breakfast, your ability to laugh about the most disgusting things that whenever they get brought up, you try to make light of them as if like it's ha ha ha, he he he, weren't we so crazy back in the day? The children that you abused, Mike Rinder, aren't laughing. The children that were trafficked as a result of you, David and Marty, begging the IRS to open a 501c for y'all to save a world by enslaving children aren't laughing whatsoever. And yes, let's dig into the weeds, shall we? About the criminal activity that you were supervising the obstruction of justice that you were supervising on the Lisa McPherson case. So in the next video, you guys, we're going to get into a lot of that nitty gritty compliments of Mike Rinder's bestie Westie. And then we're going to talk more about this interview, react to all the things that Mike Rinder keeps literally whitewashing the record on, pitching all his short stories, telling all his half-truths, telling all part of his withholds, but not the rest, to misdirect everyone. Because he's counting on everyone, including this idiot interviewing him, who's pitching him and telling him how the culture inside of the hotels worked. Oh, it must have been like this, right, Mike Rinder? Because then this happened and maybe that didn't happen and maybe there was thousands of this and maybe there was thousands of that. John Atak, you weren't in the Sea Org. So maybe shut the F up. You don't have a burn row seat at that dysfunction the way OSA operated because you were just a public, you were just a donor, you were just a paying member to normalize child trafficking at scale. Well, congratulations, John Atak, that you didn't make it into the Sea Org. Congratulations for that. So then why don't you let the man who ran the OSA op speak for himself instead of you feeding him whitewashing narratives that have nothing to do but your delusions of what you've been told to perceive in order to pitch here your great service to humanity, because we should be so thankful to you, as if you didn't read and wrote a book called Selling Somebody a Piece of Blue Sky, as if Alvin Hubbard really was selling people a piece of blue sky, John Atak. There's your false pitch. There's your lie. Alvin Hubbard sold y'all unfeathered access to children at an industrial size scale, trafficking kids in an abominable, indefensible way, normalizing for all parents to be calling their children adults. If you are not disgusted by that, then really figure out what in the hell you are, because maybe that's your problem that you don't see anything wrong with what was done, that you don't see anything wrong with what Elwin Hubbard pitched, that you studied and researched Elwin Hubbard and you still do not understand that he is nothing but a con. He's nothing but a racketeer. He was nothing but the brains of racketeering. But sure, keep laundering the image of Mike Rinder, somebody that ran literal fair games ops on you. Imagine being so pathetic and stupid and idiotic 
to sit in front of this man who's taken no real accountability for any of those fair game ops that he ran, who always just, you know, says enough just to pretend that he really is coming clean, just to pretend that he had a remorse for what he did. But he never really gets off his real withholds, does he? He always keeps just telling you the ones that he is calculating won't hurt his image, his highly curated image of really wanting to save another world after having gone in to prop up the biggest child trafficking operation ever known to man. And he cannot blame that on L. Ron Hubbard, given the fact that L. Ron Hubbard died in 86, given the fact that the IRS was going to shut down this operation, given the fact that he, Marty Rathbun, and David Miscavige were the brainchilds liaising with attorneys, with crooked AF attorneys. To what? To pitch the rhetoric of convicted felon Elwin Hubbard as a measure and a way to save a world. So really think about that. Think about that hard and clear because right about now it's giving y'all don't make a shred of sense because you're so thiddy weedy that you cannot even confront evil. Because you're so goo goo gaga for a delusion that doesn't exist in the physical universe. Children were enslaved, John Atak. Children were locked up against their will in so called audits. A full blown felony being pitched with a straight face by all these MFers as a trauma therapy. So start making a shred of sense and stop talking from your literal neck. Lisa McPherson is next. And we're going to get into all the nitty gritty of what type of illegal activity was being done, has been admitted by these people, and yet zero consequences is all they ever get. Why are they being Google Gagad by the authorities? Why are the authorities acting like these men are beyond reproach, that they can admit whatever criminal act they want to, but what? They never see a shred of consequences because why? Just because they're just middle white age men that I guess look real reputable. That's all it takes. It's all it takes for no laws to be enforced. Well, you know what? F that. The laws will be enforced and we will continue to highlight what's on the public record admissions from Mike Rinder and cohorts. That literally makes the point in it of itself. I thank you guys all for watching and I will see you all soon. Bye.